time. All right, so um, we are looking at this mole conversions practice, and this goes along with what we did yesterday. So yesterday we started looking at how we can convert between grams, liters, and particles by going through uh, this thing called the mole. And a mole is just a counting unit and you know a lot of counting units just in your normal life. For instance, if you go buy donuts, for instance, do you, you don't say you want 12 donuts. What do you say to the person at the donut store? A dozen. Yeah, you say you want a dozen donuts. Um, and so a dozen is an example of a counting unit. Um, if you go buy shoes, you don't say I want two shoes or four shoes. You say I want a pair of shoes or I want two pairs of shoes. So pair is another common counting unit. Um, there are more, but these are probably the two that we're most familiar with, the dozen and the pair. We use those all the time. Um, hi, Kanila. Uh, and so the mole is the same way. And the whole point of having the idea of the mole is because we can't see one single atom. One atom is so super tiny that we can't see it. It's way smaller this, than even the, the speck that I just put on the paper. And so we can't see just one atom. And so we have to group atoms together in these large quantities of atoms. So then we can see uh, what we're talking about because one atom of salt, table salt, NaCl, we can't see one atom, but we can see one mole of atoms of table salt. Um, and so one mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And if we write this number out, let me get an expo marker. Um, let's see, where do my expo markers go? Ah, here we go. So if we write this number out, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, times 10 to the 23rd, that means that we take 6.02 and we move the decimal point 23 times to the right. One, two, so two times, we've done two times, so now we need to move it 21 more times and add in a whole bunch of zeros. So we're going to add, move that, continue to move that decimal point, and we're going to have to add in 21 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So when we talk about a mole of particles, we're talking about this number right here, this really, 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 really big number. Um, so this many particles. So if you put this many particles or atoms of uh, table salts or molecules of table salt together, then we have an amount that's big enough so we can actually see it. And so that's the point of the mole. So we have enough of something so we can actually measure it out and see it. Because if we just talk about a single atom, then we can't see that and we can't measure it out. We don't have any uh, device that can measure out just one atom. We have to have enough so we can put it all together and then clump it so we can see it put all together. Any questions about that? Okay, um, so when we talk about a mole, we mean 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And there are a few things that are all considered particles. So when we say particle, we mean either an atom, a molecule, molecule a formula unit. Um, and a formula unit is basically a molecule of a of an ionic compound. It's just a different word for it. So atom, molecule, formula unit. Um, we could just say compound. So all these things are different types of particles. So the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles or atoms or molecules or formula units or compounds. Any of those mean essentially the same thing. Uh, and we have that listed down here as well. Um, so there are several things that this many particles equals a mole, but there are a couple other things that are also equal to one mole. Um, when we talk about liters of a gas, one mole is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. Um, so that's another mole equality, meaning a thing that's equal to one mole. And then the last mole equality uh, is how we get from grams to moles, 
which is a super duper important one because we can actually measure grams. If we take an electronic balance, we can measure out how many grams of something we have. Um, and so this is a super important one. And one mole of a substance is equal to something called the molar mass. Um, and the molar masses of the different elements are all found on our trusty periodic table. So if you look at your periodic table, these numbers at the bottom with all the decimal places, these are our molar masses for each element. So for instance, one mole of magnesium atoms has a mass of 24.305 grams. Uh, or one mole of aluminum has a mass of 26.982 grams. So the mass of one mole of something depends on what element we have. Or um, tomorrow we'll be talking about molar mass of compounds, so it would depend on what compound we have. Any questions so far um, on any of these mole equalities or how we get those things? No. Okay. Let's look at using them then. I'm going to flip the page over. So these first problems are all going to be to convert between moles and particles. Um, and so looking back at the front of our sheet, we said that one mole is equal to how many particles? Well, it's the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we're going to use that number of particles as our conversion factor to make our unit conversions. Um, and this is just this is just dimensional analysis, which is what we did in our very first unit of chemistry. It's just uh, it's dimensional analysis with some new numbers involved. So we know that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Um, and by particle, we mean particle, atom, molecule, or formula unit. All of those things mean the same thing. So with this information, we can make a series of conversion factors. We can either put one mole on top and then 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles on bottom. Or we can flip that conversion factor around and we can have the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles on top. Um, and we can have the one mole on the bottom. So either way we want to do it, um, we can keep, we can use those conversion factors. <clears throat> okay. Um, so for our first problem, it says how many atoms are in 1.68 moles of silicon? So like we talked about in our notes yesterday, anything we write down, we should have three parts to it. We should have a value, meaning a number, so that would be the 1.68. We should have a unit, our unit here is moles, and we should have a substance. And by substance, we mean what type is it? Is it silicon or is it sodium chloride or is it aluminum? What substance is it? So our substance in this first problem is silicon. So I'm going to start by writing out my given value just like we've been doing in dimensional analysis since unit one. We're going to write out 1.68 moles and I'm going to abbreviate mole, M-O-L. That's the abbreviation for mole. Uh, and then silicon, I'm also going to abbreviate with its chemical symbol. So silicon's chemical symbol is SI, moles of SI. I know I can put this over one, so that way I know it's up in the numerator. And then we're going to multiply by a conversion factor. Any questions so far? No. Okay, so the unit that we want to cancel needs to go on bottom. So we pick this moles of silicon up and we move it to the bottom so it'll cancel. Moles is our unit, silicon is our substance. And then we want the unit we're trying to convert to goes on top. So we need to look back at our problem and pick out the unit that we're trying to convert to, uh, which it'll usually follow the question word. So it says how many atoms. So that tells us that we're trying to convert to atoms. And it doesn't specify what type of atom it is, so we're going to assume that we're saying as silicon atoms. We're still talking about silicon, it's just that we want to go from moles to atoms of silicon. So on top we're going to put atoms, silicon.
Notice how I'm setting up all of my units and substances first before I do any math in this problem. Before I put any numbers in my conversion factor, I want to set up my units first. Um, so now that I have this set up, we need to put in some numbers. Whenever we see mole, we know that one mole equals some number of atoms. So next to mole, we're going to pair up our units. We're going to put the one next to the mole. And then how many atoms equal one mole? Well, it's the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So there we have our setup perfectly there. Now all that's left is we need to type this into our calculator. Let's look at our calculator. Let's see, get some light over here. So depending on what type of calculator you have, it's gonna be a little bit different for how we type it in. Um, if you need help with your specific calculator, um, then always feel free to reach out or to ask here if you know what you're doing. Um, on this particular calculator, the button that we use to type in exponents is this EE button. And we talked about this at the beginning of the year, but you might have forgotten or don't remember how to enter it, and that's okay. So to type this in, I'm going to type 1.68 times, in my, because we multiply everything on top, so it's 1.68 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 1.68 times, and I'm going to put 6.02, hit my special button, E, and then type 23. And then I'm going to hit enter, and there's my answer, 1.01136, let's type, write this whole thing out, 01136, E to the 24th. And, but you have to remember, this is not a correct way to show our final answer. We have to put this in correct scientific notation, and we have to round to the correct number of significant figures. So we're thinking back to unit one a little bit here. So first of all, let's talk about uh, our scientific note, or our significant figures. So up in our problem, 1.68 has one, two, three significant figures. So we also need our answer to be rounded to three significant figures. We're going to keep the one, the zero, and the one, and we're going to look at the next digit over to determine if it rounds up or it stays a one. So is this going to round up or is it going to stay a one? Stay a one. Stay a one. Perfect. It is going to stay a one because it's less than five. Um, so 1.01 .01, and then this E part means times 10 and then that 24 is our exponent times 10 to the 24th. So now we've written our answer correctly and all we need to do is add on our unit and substance that we converted to. So these moles of silicon, there's one on top and one on bottom. So these ones cancel out. And we are just left with atoms of silicon as our final unit. Atoms of silicon. Box that final answer in right there. Okay, questions. Anybody have a question? Okay, I'm going to erase some of my board right here. Erasing it as I go anyway. All right, let's look at number two. And you'll find that as you do more of these types of problems, it goes faster and faster because it's a very repetitive process. It's the kind of the same type of process every time. Um, and you'll get more and more accustomed to following the process. All right, so number two, how many moles are in 7.89 times 10 to the 24th formula units of sodium chloride? So my value would be the 7.89 times 10 to the 24th. My unit would be this formula unit, and then my substance would be sodium chloride. So let's go ahead and write that out. 7.89 times 10 to the 24th. Formula units, formula units of sodium chloride. And so I don't want to write sodium chloride, so I'm going to crisscross to figure out my formula. Sodium 
and chlorine. So sodium has a positive one charge, chlorine has a minus one charge. So I get NaCl as my formula. I'm gonna put all this over one to remind myself that it's up in the numerator. Then we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor. We want formula units NaCl to cancel, so we're gonna drag this and drop it on the bottom. So I'm gonna rewrite formula units of NaCl. And we're trying to convert to a new unit. We're looking next to our question word. It says, how many moles? So we're trying to convert to two moles. Moles and then our substance is still NaCl. All right, now that we have our unit set up, we need to put some numbers in. So whenever we see particles, atoms, molecules, or formula units, we put this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd next to it. So right here next to formula units, I'm gonna put that number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then whenever I see mole, I know I'm gonna put a one next to mole because one mole equals some number of something else. So now we have our problem totally set up, but now we need to enter it into our calculator. This time we have 7.89 times 10 to the 24th times one, and then we need to divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd to get our final answer. So we're gonna have to divide in our calculator Let's pull out our calculator here. Let's see. So we have 7.89 e to the 24th divided by, and remember whenever we have an exponent that we're dividing by, I always recommend putting it in parentheses. So I'm gonna open my parentheses, 6.02 e 23rd. Close my parentheses hit enter. So my answer here is 13.106. Let's write that out. 13.1063. But now we need to look at our significant figures. So back up in our problem, the 7.89 has three significant figures, three significant figures. So my answer also needs to have three. So one, two, three. And we're going to look at that next digit over. The zero is definitely going to keep it as a one, so my final answer would be 13.1. Formula units is gonna cancel out. Whoops, sorry, so we'll cross those out, and we're gonna be left with moles of NaCl. Moles NaCl. Whoop. Anybody have questions on that one? I'm confused on how you type it in the calculator. Okay, um, so let's do go through that one more time. Let's see. I'm going to try to get my light on it a little better. It's hard to show the calculator on the camera. Let's see. Can you see my calculator pretty well now? Yes. Okay, so uh, when every calculator has a different sort of button, so you're looking for a button that either says EE, -E, like mine, or sometimes they say times 10 to the N or times 10 to the X, um, those are generally what they say on them. So you type the main part of your number, so for instance, 7.89, um, and then instead of typing times 10 raised to a power, you just hit your special button. So 7.89, my special button is this EE -E button. So I'm just going to click that once and then type in my exponent, which is the 24 part. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so we did that first part. Um, but then we need to divide by the part on the bottom. So we're going to divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we're hitting the division sign first. And then whenever we divide by a number that has, has in scientific notation, sometimes the calculator might read it incorrectly. So we want to put that number in parentheses. So I'm going to put this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, in parentheses. So I'm opening my parentheses. 
I type 6.02, hit my special button for the time send part, E to the 23rd, then close my parentheses and hit enter to get my final answer. So every calculator is a little different. If you still need help with your specific calculator, feel free to send me a message um, and we can come up with a time to work through how to use your particular calculator because this is something that's challenging to do from at home. Normally in class I can just show you and while we're at home it's hard to do that. Um, any other questions on that problem? No. Okie dokie, let's go ahead and continue then. Number three, how many moles are in 4.2 times 10 to the 26th atoms of aluminum? Okay, so we're first going to start, let me move my camera just a little bit closer so it's a little clearer for you guys. We're gonna start with our value unit and substance that's given. So our value is the 4.2 times 10 to the 26th. Our unit is atoms and our substance is aluminum. So we're gonna write that whole thing out, 4.20 times 10 to the 26th. Thankfully it says atoms and not formula units because atoms is a lot easier to write down, of aluminum and aluminum's chemical symbol is AL. So there's my whole given value. I'm gonna put that whole thing over one and then times my conversion factor so I want atoms of aluminum to cancel out. So I'm gonna put that part on bottom, atoms of aluminum. And then I'm trying to convert to a new unit. It says how many moles. So I know I'm trying to get to moles. So on top I'm gonna to put moles and still is aluminum, moles of aluminum. So now I need some numbers. So I'm gonna pair up my numbers with the correct units. Moles, anytime I see mole, I put a one next to mole. So I'm gonna put a one up here next to mole. And then anytime I see atoms, I put this number, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I'm gonna come back down here, put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So now I have my whole setup done. I just need to type this into my calculator again. Let's pull out our calculator one more time. Let's see if I can get my, there we go. So we're typing in 4.2, hit our special button, E to the 26th, divided by, because it's on the bottom, so I know I need to divide, open my parentheses, 6.02, E, that special button, 23. Close my parentheses, hit enter. So this time I got 697.67. Let's write that out. And then I need to look at my significant figures. So back over here, I have one, two, three significant figures. This zero is significant because it's after the decimal place. So three significant figures, and my given value, so my answer should also have three. So I'm gonna keep one, two, three, and then I'm looking at that next number over to determine how to round. So is seven going to stay a seven or is it gonna round up to an eight? Round up to an eight. Perfect, it is going to round up to an eight because the six is bigger than five. So it's gonna be 698. And then my atoms of aluminum will cancel out. So I'm gonna cross those ones out and I'm just left with moles of aluminum as my final unit. Box in that final answer. All right, on to the last one. Anybody have questions? All right, let's move on, do the last one on this first section. How many molecules are in 3.685 moles of water? Let's see. So let's start by giving our, getting our given value, 3.685, our given unit, moles, and our given substance, water. So we'll write that out. 3.685 moles, I can abbreviate M-O-L, 
and I know my chemical formula for water is H2O. So instead of writing out water, I'm going to put H2O. You could write out the word water if you wanted to, but I like to write it as a formula. Put it over one and then times the conversion factor. So I want my moles of H2O to cancel out. So I know that's going to go on bottom. Moles of H2O goes on bottom. And then I want to convert to a new unit. It says how many molecules. So that's my new unit that I want. So that's going to go on top. Molecules of H2O. Now I just need to pick out some numbers to go next to each unit. Anytime I have moles, I come up here. I know I put a one next to moles. Where I put one mole on bottom and then anytime I have molecules or particles or atoms or formula units I put that number which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I'm going to bring that number put it next to molecules 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and then put my equal sign. We'll come over to our trusty calculator once again see if we can get some better light here. There we go. And this time we're multiplying 3.685 times the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And when I did that in my calculator, I get 2.218 e to the 24th. But I know I can't leave my answer written just like this. So first I need to round the correct sig figs. Oh, we might not have carried out enough decimal places. 2.21837 e to the 24th. So I need one, two, three, four significant figures in my answer. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to look at that next number over, which is that three, to figure out whether I round up to nine or it stays an eight. Three is less than five, so it is going to stay an eight, 2.218. And then this E we know means times 10, and the power of the exponent is 24. Now, looking back at our problem to figure out our units, the moles of H2O is going to cancel out. And we're going to be left with molecules of H2O. So that is our final unit, molecules of H2O. Box that final answer in as well.